do you have a right to protect yourself from tyrants? And if so, here's another logical step, which really ought to be easy. Does the tyrant get to determine which weapons are appropriate for you to have? No, no, because if, if you let him make that decision, then you'd be ceding your right to self-defense to the tyrant. Within the next generation of Christian lawyers and legal experts who identify as conservative, you find young men who are mostly apathetic toward the achievements of the American founding fathers, and instead they expound leftist talking points day and night. To illustrate, I'm going to share one shocking display of this anti-rights, anti-guns, anti-American attitude written by a young man who I'll simply refer to as JG. This is what he wrote. We conservative Christians must come to grips with the very real possibility that the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution will be repealed someday according to legitimate processes of our system. As disagreeable as that might be, it is not a cause for rebellion. All capitals. And if you think it would be a cause for rebellion, then you have a sinful attitude. We have no mandate from God to do such a thing. There is no universal right from God to own guns, and I wish Christians would quit saying such a thing. No one obtained this idea straight from the Bible, but rather English culture developed this right and later generations claimed for political reasons that it was a universal right from God. We should not get our ideas about God from the American founders or any human source, but from the Bible. This is the essence of the doctrine of sola scriptura. Jacob, what's the word for this fallacy here? Stupidity. <laughs> I was going to say biblicism. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, tomato, tomato, right? <laughs> bi biblicism. The idea that if the Bible doesn't specifically say so, then you would be wrong to believe that you know what's right and wrong in the situation. And you could call it solo scriptura. You're not allowed to get any moral ideas from anywhere except for a verse in the Bible. It's causing conservatives to become incompetent and powerless on the topic of moral reasoning. So let me read to you from the 1689 Baptist Confession. The Holy Scripture is the only sufficient, certain, and infallible rule of all saving knowledge, faith, and obedience. Although the light of nature and the works of creation and providence do so far manifest the goodness, wisdom, and power of God as to leave men inexcusable. And it goes on, yet they're not sufficient to give that knowledge of God and his will, which is necessary unto salvation. So clearly stated. If you just think about these concepts of special revelation and general revelation as you read that, you'll understand exactly what they're doing here. They are making it incredibly clear from the beginning. This is a prolegomena issue. Before they go on and declare what the teaching of scripture is, they need to position what is the role of the teaching of scripture within man's overall knowledge. And that's what they chose to do at the very beginning. That was on purpose. Yep. And th that's not, that's not unique to that confession. That's virtually every historic confession that like they, they all have that same general model. And most of the time, that same general language and uh, framing of the issue as they begin the confession. And uh, here's a quote from uh, David Van Drunen about what sola scriptura means as a doctrine. This is really key to know in today's cultural moment. So many people don't know this. The Reformation doctrine of the sufficiency of scripture does not claim that Christians need only scripture and not natural revelation, but that Christians need only scripture and not other kinds of special revelation, end quote. So that's, uh, the doctrine distinguishes between which special revelation or supposed special revelation really is and which really isn't. It's not even referring to general revelation. As opposed to JG's position and OG's position, the Bible is not the only means that we have to the will of God, to, the only means of access that we have to knowing what the will of God is or what moral truth is. The Bible is the special source of God's revelation, verbal revelation, to give that knowledge of God, which is necessary unto salvation. That's what it does. JG's error here is that he's overlooking common sense. He's overlooking general revelation plus a series of other errors. Overlooking general revelation can lead you into such errors as being a pacifist. Remember in JG's argument, he, he didn't actually take a position on whether you have a right to self-defense. He probably thinks you do have a right to self-defense to some degree. But, you know, people like John Piper, who seem stunningly blind to general revelation, end up taking it uh, in a certain direction and becoming pacifists based on their understanding of some of the New Testament and their lack of understanding of God's world. From general revelation alone, you ought to know that you should protect your own life. You have to be very confused to be a pacifist. You have to basically overlook everything that general revelation says. Now, let's talk about this moral right to defend yourself from thieves or from killers. If you have that right, then what about the moral right to defend yourself 
from the most powerful types of thieves and killers, which would be wicked rulers or tyrants. This is the, the way that general revelation should lead your mind as you're thinking through this question. Do you have a right to protect yourself from tyrants? And if so, here's another logical step, which really ought to be easy. Does the tyrant get to determine which weapons are appropriate for you to have? No, no, because if, if you let him make that decision, then you'd be ceding your right to self-defense to the tyrant. So here's the logic of it, and this is what anybody ought to have access to by general revelation. The right to self-defense entails the right to sufficient means of self-defense. 